Hey guys, it's Jenny and welcome back once again to Solid Gold. As you know if you've watched pretty much any of my recent videos, I recently moved from northern Minnesota all the way down to central Florida. It was a really long move all told, it took about two full days and I brought all 40 of my goldfish with me. But a lot of people end up rehoming their goldfish because they know they're gonna be moving soon or they try bringing their goldfish with them and they end up losing a bunch of them. I've just heard of both of those scenarios happening way too often and really if you know uh, how to package them properly, there's just no reason for that to happen. So this video will show you how to safely pack your goldfish if you are gonna be moving with them. The biggest thing to keep in mind is that you have to package your fish as if you're shipping them through the mail. Basically, you are subjecting them to the same conditions that they would be experiencing if you were shipping them in the mail, especially if you're moving really long distance. Even if you're moving just a short distance, it's still really good to package them as if you were shipping them because it will just overall be the best uh, conditions for them during the move and will help decrease stress and keep them healthy and happy in the long run. As you're preparing for your big move, make sure that you withhold food from your goldfish for at least four days before the move. If you're feeding them right up until the time you move, they're gonna be excreting a lot of waste in the fish bag and it's just gonna foul up the water and stress them out and maybe kill them. You'll need to find a cardboard box that has a styrofoam box on the inside of it. Now the styrofoam liner helps insulate your fish from temperature extremes and it also helps absorb shock from the box being bumped around during transit. You can reuse a box from a time when you had a fish shipped to you in the past, which is usually what I do, or if that's not an option, check at your nearest veterinary clinics and animal shelters. They often have vaccines and other perishable items shipped to them in cardboard boxes that have a styrofoam box on the inside and they usually just end up throwing away those boxes, so they'll give them to you for free. Lastly, if you can't manage to find a cardboard box with a styrofoam box on the inside of it, don't worry because you can always just use one of those styrofoam coolers or even a normal cooler to pack your fish in. You'll also need some fish shipping bags, and you can find these online at many different aquarium product stores. The size and thickness of the bag will be determined by the size of your fish. If you have larger fish, get a larger bag, and I usually get a bag that's at least as wide as the fish is long. I would generally recommend a three millimeter thickness. When bagging your fish, use fresh clean water, not aquarium water, that matches the aquarium water in temperature and pH. Add a double dose of water conditioner that neutralizes ammonia, like Seachem Prime or Amquil Plus, because even though you haven't fed your fish recently, they're still going to be excreting ammonia through their gills. For best results, you should only pack one fish per bag, and only use just enough water to cover their dorsal fin. You want only about one third of the bag to be filled with water, and the other two thirds filled with pure oxygen. Remember guys, this is very important. Oxygen, not water, is the limiting factor inside of a shipping bag. If a fish dies in transit and the packaging doesn't look like it was beat up or anything, it's usually because it ran out of oxygen in the shipping bag. Probably the most difficult part of this whole process is filling up the shipping bags with pure oxygen, but with a little bit of planning and resourcefulness, it can be made a lot easier. One thing you can try is contacting your local aquarium store and asking if they will fill the shipping bag with oxygen for you if you bring the fish already bagged up with water to their store. Most aquarium stores are run by fish-loving people, so they're are usually very happy to help. In this case, just get the fish all bagged up at home, trap some air in the bags with your hands, and tie the bag loosely with a rubber band for a quick drive over to the aquarium store. The store employees will probably help you with tying the bag, but remember to bring your own rubber bands. Keep in mind, it's not the rubber band that keeps the water from leaking, but rather the tight twist that you close the bag with that the rubber band is then holding in place. Make sure the twist is very tight and the rubber band secure. I would also recommend that you double bag the fish in case of any leakage. Once your fish are bagged up with pure oxygen and back at your house, pack them up in your styrofoam lined cardboard box. It's a good idea to fill any empty spaces around the bags with packing peanuts or other packing material to help keep the bags in an upright position and also to help absorb shock. If the weather where you live or will be moving to is very warm, you'll want to use an ice pack inside of the moving box. Fish do much better when being moved or shipped if the temperature is cool. So I would say anything over about 60 degrees, definitely use an ice pack inside the box. With the styrofoam layer inside of the cardboard box as well, that will help hold in that ice pack coolness 
so that it lasts for a lot longer. And if the weather is very cold, say less than 20 degrees Fahrenheit, you might want to consider using a heat pack, but just keep in mind that generally fish do better when the temperature is cooler, so it may not be totally necessary. After your fish are safely bagged up and boxed up in their moving box, you can now break down your aquarium. And remember guys, you do not need to bring with any aquarium water in order to preserve the cycle or the beneficial bacteria that live in your tank. These bacteria do not live in the water column. They colonize on hard surfaces in the tank and that's why you have ceramic media or bio balls or whatever you might have in your filter chamber. So really all you need to do is preserve the biological filter media that you have in your filter and you can do that by keeping it moist and making sure that it has plenty of oxygen. This is a really oxygen loving type of bacteria so if they're kept in stagnant water with no oxygen during your transit they will probably all die off. So you can package them in a very similar way that you packaged your fish just in a shipping bag, but you would put a little bit less water, basically just enough water to keep the biological media moist during transit, and then fill the rest of the bag with pure oxygen. And then I would say do that if you are moving a long distance. If you're moving a shorter distance, you can probably just put the biological filter media in a bucket and just keep it moist, you know, just a thin layer of water in the bucket, and then move it that way without having to bag it and put pure oxygen in it, and it'll probably be just fine. Once you arrive and set up your aquarium in your new home, just fill the tank with water and put the biological media back in the filter and turn the filter on. You should have been able to preserve your beneficial bacteria that way, but I would still check your uh, parameters for ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate, and even pH. Uh, every day for the first week or so after your move just to make sure that everything has been preserved. Once you arrive at your new home, float the moving bags in the aquarium for about 20 minutes to make sure the bag water temperature matches the aquarium water temperature. Do not open the bag until you're ready to take the fish out and keep the aquarium lights off to minimize stress. Remember, the fish have just been sitting in a dark box for quite a long time, so bright aquarium lights will startle them and stress them out. After the moving bags have been floating in the aquarium for about 20 minutes, open the bag and put the fish in the aquarium with your hands. Try not to get any water from the moving bag into the aquarium. After the whole moving process is over, make sure you keep the aquarium lights off for at least a couple of days just to allow the fish to de-stress and settle in without the additional stress of a bright light overhead. Also make sure that you continue to withhold food for at least two days, maybe even four days after the move, just so that the fish can focus all of their energy on recovering from that whole moving process instead of having to focus any energy on digestion. Fish are not like people. People need to eat multiple times a day. Fish can go for a lot longer without food, so don't worry about them at all. Now guys, these are the exact same steps that I follow to bring my four adult fish down with me from Minnesota to Florida. All of my fish are pretty big, with the biggest one being about nine and a half inches long, so it was a daunting task, but they all made it safe and sound. All of them are absolutely thriving here in their new home with no ill effects after that whole moving experience, which lasted about two days and it was very chaotic. So I hope this video helps all of you guys out there watching be able to bring your beloved pets with you when you move. There's really just no reason that you should feel like you have to give them up just because you're moving. Uh, if you follow these steps, yeah, it's it's difficult and it's a process, but you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it too. So thanks so much for watching guys, and until next time, stay gold. Grim says hi. Say hi, Grim. Say hi. Hi everyone. I'm a cutie. I'm a little cutie. <laughs> This video was made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. To find out more, go to patreon.com slash solidgoldfish.